All right, so how to set up a basic conjugate system. I have articles on this. So if you search, you know, Dave Tate, the eight keys, basically to lay this out, the conjugate method, which to me, when I say conjugate, to me, that's West Side. You know, so Louis was the first person to use the word conjugate that I know of. The first person to use it in writing, the first person to use it, you know, he is the person that made the conjugate method known. You know, so just by common law, you know, he would own copyright trademark to that. So I, I, I want to give respect and credit where credit's due because that is the truth. Now, I do understand where, you know, people disagree with that because it is a method of periodization. And I understand that side as well. You know, I'm just giving credit where credit's due. The problem is a lot of people associate the conjugate method with the West Side method. And then a bunch of fucking idiots get out there and start talking about what the conjugate method is. And then that gets associated back to being the West Side method, which is a disservice in diluting the method Louis spent three decades working on trying to perfect, it maybe four decades, five decades, you know, working on, you know, to perfect and to get right. So when I give this template, what I'm actually putting out there is what I used to present when I did the West Side seminars, but we're going back a long time. We're going back 15, 16, 17 years. So it may not be what they're doing today. You know, they have a website to get that information from. I suggest you go there if you wanna know the current information from there. I might see Louie once a year, but I do feel I know how Louie feels about this better than most. Maybe a handful of people understand how he feels about it to the degree that I do. So that respect's given there. But the rest of what I'm gonna say, you know, is what I would call non-West Side conjugate. Let's just say that. You know, I'm not gonna come out and say that every single fucking time. You know, it has to be said, but, you know, I think, I do think that has to be noted because there's a lot of people getting on a high horse and, you know, arguing about this and it's, it's really stupid, you know, just fucking give the guy credit for what he did. It's, it's how fucking difficult is that? But anyhow, basic, very, very basic. When you're dealing with, you know, a conjugate type of training program and I, fuck, I hate to say things like this. It, it can be very, very simple. At the same time, you know, you can listen to Louie or I can get on a rant or you can listen to, you know, Matt Winnie and other people who have really done deep, deep dives into this and you'll get confused really fucking fast because there's a, there's a lot of spokes on the wheel and the, the higher a lifter gets, the, the better you need to know how that, all those spokes work, all right? So most of my focus has been on trying to help lifters become elite power lifters, not how to be, not how to get people to train for their first meet, you know? So a lot of my bias and focus comes from looking actually too deep at what a beginner may actually need. But to lay it out, very, very simple, you know, you have, a max effort day for the squat and deadlift. You have a max effort day for the bench. You have a dynamic day for the squat. You have a dynamic day for the bench. So, you know, how it was performed at Westside and probably still is today is, you know, Monday was max effort day for the squat and deadlift. The first exercise of that day is gonna be your max effort exercise. There's plenty of articles on EliteFTS.com. There's plenty of articles on WestsideBarbell.com to explain how to use the max effort method. 
So that exercise is executed. You know, after that exercise is what I personally call the supplemental exercise. That exercise is gonna be trained really, really hard. It's gonna be trained in probably a three to five rep range, and it's gonna have a higher dynamic correspond, higher carryover to that max effort exercise or any of your max effort exercises than any other lift would. So typically for the squat, that's gonna usually be something that's gonna work the hamstrings from origin and insertion at the same time. So it could be a glute ham raise, it could be an RDL, it could be a pull through, it could be you know, any, any variation of that, a hamstring type of work. If that's your weak point, if not, say it's lats or upper back, then it's gonna flip. For most people, it's usually gonna be hamstrings. Typically, there's only gonna be one supplemental exercise dealing for with a, a beginner or an intermediate because you start throwing in more than one, recovery is gonna become an issue. That's when you fall into what I call accessory exercises. The accessory exercises are gonna be chained, trained in a higher rep range, so a lower intensity. So, so the intensity being you know, a factor of a one rep max. The max effort exercise is pushing 90% plus. The supplemental exercise is pushing usually around 75, maybe 85%. You get to the accessories, you're dealing with eight to 10 reps, you're dealing with things in like the 50, 60% range. So a little bit easier to recover from, more reps can be performed. Those are gonna be exercises that are gonna have a higher correspondence carryover to that supplemental. It's like working up the chain to that supplemental exercise. So when you're thinking of the squat, what muscles are gonna be more associated, easier way to think about it with the squat? You know, hamstrings, quads, you know, that kind of stuff. Lunges, things like that would fall in there in the accessories, abs falls in there. And then after that, you know, I put abs in the accessories, but some people would put another line and say the next group would be, you know, core, which would be lower back, abs, that type of thing, which has to be, it has to be in there. The lower back, you know, torso, the whole torso has to be in there somewhere. Then after that, you're dealing with, you know, some people will call prehab, some people will call just the stupid shit you have to do, light bodybuilding stuff. You know, I don't want to say it's unnecessary stuff, but it's not as prioritized. So it is down towards the end. So that's the max effort day for the squat. If we go to the dynamic effort day for the squat, there's many different types of dynamic effort waves. Again, search the dynamic effort method on EliteFTS.com or Westside Barbell. You'll, you'll get more than enough information to know how to cycle through dynamic work. After that, it's essentially a duplicate of what the other day was. You do a supplemental exercises and you hit your accessories. The supplemental exercises you typically stick with, you know, as long as you can keep getting stronger or do more reps. So that could be changing it every single time, staying with the same thing every Monday for three weeks, staying with the same thing on Monday, Friday, Monday, or you know, however you wanna wave it, that's, that's completely fine, it's up to you. You just wanna make sure that whatever those supplemental exercises are that you're using, that you're always getting better at them. If you're not getting better at them, switch them out, put something else in, get better at that, then switch it back in so you can get better at it. Same thing with the accessories. When you're dealing with the max effort bench, same type of layout, you're gonna pick the max effort exercise, we'll work that as it's supposed to be, hit that supplemental exercise, which is gonna focus on what your biggest weak point's gonna be. Typically, I've seen that for intermediates and beginners, some type of heavy tricep movement, could be a close grip bench, it could be a close grip board press, it could be close grip you know, floor press, it's, it's some type of tricep pressing movement. And then from there, it falls into the accessories, which again, tricep shoulders, that kind of stuff, and moves on. The dynamic day for the bench, same thing. Search the dynamic effort method, find that for the bench. There's the different dynamic waves. Accessories and supplementals follow the same pattern. That is it in its basic, easiest template.